اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولن ترد عنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي respected viewers and listeners assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the ayah which i have read is from surah al baqarah the cow or haifa chapter 2 verse 120 allah said walam tarda ankal yahud wal nasara hatta tattabi'a millatahum that these jews and christians will never be satisfied with you o muslims unless you adopt their brand of religion either convert these people or be like themselves but there is no tranquility there is no parley between you and them this is the verdict from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 1400 years ago should we pay heed towards that that's i'm going to discuss today chapter 2 verse 120 today the topic is the matter of palestine belongs to who jews or arabs well before going into that i would like to clarify few terminologies which bulk of muslim brethren or sisters are unaware of the first thing the word israel you have to understand the word israel came from the name of yaqub alayhi salam jacob you see if you read bible it says that jacob wrestled god I don't want to go into anomalies or these kind of things how would they enter these kind of things in the book of God but they say Jacob wrestled God and God changed his name from Jacob to Israel so far so good L in Hebrew means God Allah Isra means like fighter mujahid or whatsoever in a loose term like a first person who fought with God or the person who fight for the cause of God So Israel means this when Quran says ya bani israel Quran says that oh children of israel meaning children of yaqub alayhi salam 12 children the second thing in Quran you find several times yahuda yahudi this is the people or children who were born from the progeny of yuda juda and he was one of the sons of jacob jacob yaqub alayhi salam according to the bible in islam so when quran addresses yahudo meaning the people who uh, lived in the city of juda or from the progeny of juda itself both means they are addressed but when quran says ya bani israel everyone addressed in it now abraham to abraham you see in the bible in genesis chapter 17 which i'm going to elaborate today exfoliate today inshallah over there it says that abraham was changed to abraham when he was circumcised when he was 99 years old God Almighty took a, ever, took an everlasting covenant between Abraham and himself God Almighty that he shall be circumcised of his foreskin not from heart which Paul said it I don't want to go into that and this covenant will be amongst the progeny till everlasting like till the day of judgment or yawm al qiyamah So God changed his name from Abraham to Abraham which means the father of the nations not nation not only Jews nations plural Genesis chapter 17 which I'm going to inshallah elaborate while clearing these all terminologies first 
So similarly, Sarai was changed to Sarah or Sarah, whatever the pronunciation the American would like to say, but we usually say Sarah. And she was the first wife of Abraham alayhi salam. And her name also changed from Sarah Sarah to Sarah from the Bible, Genesis 17, and then changed into Sarah when she was given a good news that she's going to bear a son, Isaac, which is mentioned in Genesis chapter 18. Now, please be attentive when I'm going to explain these things. Before going into that, let me uh, tell you something I just read today that Israel forces again attacked Masjid al-Aqsa after they agreed on ceasefire. You see, this is what I say. Allah says in the Quran, that they will never be satisfied with you unless you adopt their brand of religion. Either become them or make them self, or make them like yourselves. But there's no middle hope, tranquility, peace, serenity, or parlay between them, never. There must always be consent and resentment going on. And this is not something new. It started long time before. These are the people who divided the Ummah of Isa ibn Maryam Muslims. Paul of Tarsus. Again happened. Divided the Ummah of Muhammad Ali I don't want to go into that. Jews. Because they think that they are the chosen people. And this is what I'm going to discuss now. Some aspects of political point of view, a logical point, and then their spiritual point where they keep saying, this is our promised land. Who promised? God Almighty. Let's see what the Bible says. God promised to who? Palestine. Few terminologies, then I'm going to go to the political point of view, then I will go to the spiritual point of view. You see promised land, they keep repeating promised land, promised land, Palestine, Canaan. You have to understand the terminology Canaan because this is going to be used in the Bible. Canaan was the son of Ham. Noah was having three children, Ham, Sham, Yafis. Sham comes Semites, Jews and Christians and Muslims, Semitic religions. Then another Ham Sham Yafis. But you have to understand if you read Genesis chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 20, where God cursed Canaan, who was this Canaan? Canaan was this children, one of the sons of Ham. Ham was the son of Noah, alayhi salam, Noah. And Ham was having four children, Kut, Put, Mizraim, and Canaan. Sorry, Kut, Push, Mizraim, and Canaan. Canaan was his fourth child. And Canaan was the place where today we call it the Levant, where the southern part will hit it to Israel today and Palestine. If you see the map, search the Levant, L-E-V-A-N-T, you will see the map in the old days. And now the currently Palestine, Israel is located in some part of Egypt or some part of maybe Jordan, etc. Goliath, Golan Heights. So this is clear too. Canaan, whenever referred in the Bible, it is me. It means Palestine because those days Palestine was not the name. So this is the terminology which was very important before I go into forward uh, steps. Political point of view again broke the truce. I would like to say, pay regards to our foreign minister of Pakistan and. Trust me, he won my heart. You see, I'm not a political guy. I'm not a supporter of any party. But when somebody says something which really touches my heart, I have to say, I have to appreciate and give a token of respect. You see, he is there right now in United Nations for discussion of these things, which atrocities and brutalities these Jews are doing. Imagine what kind of people are these. They are killing little children, infants, babies, and they get rid of that. They said it's okay for us. Whatever the other party is doing towards them, that's not the discussion. Then in return, how can you justify killing little babies? This is what happens when you learn from your Bible. You see, our people don't know. They never read Bible. It's in their Bible. 
They written in their Bible, take the hand, take the legs of the baby and hit their heads on the rocks, on the stones. This is what they say in their Bible. Kill the donkeys, kill women, children, everyone, nothing must be left with breathe. Kill them all, even the donkeys must not be spared. Book of Joshua, read it. Book of Numbers chapter 31, read it. Kill people, keep yourself virgins. They are, they are good for you. Rape them, kill people. You see, I've made many lectures about atrocities, ab normalities, uh, absurdities, propensities in the Bible. I discussed this in detail and I have written down the book too. You can refer to the book and check. But this is the fitra. This is the nature of these people. One, this Samson, he can kill 300 people, even 1000 people with the jawbone of a donkey. You are gone for good. You have nothing in this world. This is the mentality of these Jews. They didn't even spare prophets. They killed prophets. Jesus Christ said it. You kill prophets from righteous Abel to Zechariah, the son of Bacharias. The blood of the prophets will be upon your shoulders on the day of judgment. You Jews, you, you whited sepulchers. You adulterous and evil generation. You brutes and snakes. Who said it? Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, 39, and 40. Many places he addressed this nation like that. Moses said to them, you stiff-necked people, since I liberated you from Pharaoh's bondage. Is it not written in your book of Deuteronomy, these statements? And what happened when the fifth, sixth book fall in Joshua, Yusha bin Nun, who was one of the disciples of Musa alayhi salam, and under his circumstances and his, his command, they went to Palestine. Now, ask, I'm asking you a question. Bani Umayyah ruled Spain for 700 years. Didn't they, should it be the claiming now to give them back because 700 years they ruled it? Justify that. Why only you have entitled to get your holy land back? Ah, because it's given by God. It's given by God, we will see in the Bible. But on the political point of view, who gave you right to take this back? Why the Arabs shouldn't have the right to take Spain back, Hispania, where they ruled for 700 years? Give them back. See, you can't do, do like this. The only things remains here, might is right. Twice armed is he whose cause is just. Thrice armed is he who gets in first. This is all because of this technology and weapons they are doing this. It's not because of justice and ruling. They know it very well. Our small little Palestinian boy is enough to fix you guys. Remove your weapons, then see who has courage. Allah says in the Quran, Allah mentioned in the Quran about the fitra of Jews. Allah says when you confront them in the war with your real, you know, utmost, uh, uh, what you call enthusiasm, they will run away. They will run away. Like we have a saying in our Urdu, when the P is hollow inside, it makes more sound, but it's hollow from inside. You know, P's, P-E-A-S. So this is what they, these are the nature. This only talk, talk, talk because of the weapons. So give them back. No, because they say, no, it's not our promised land. That's why. You see, this is hypocritic. Hey, this is hypocrisy, intellectual hypocrisy. Anyways, he went there and he took a, our foreign minister. He took interview with CNN and beautifully said that the media is no more and she she knows what he's talking about the jews control media i salute you sir for saying this on their faces that you these jews they control media at least somebody said it and it's our country pakistan alhamdulillah we are proud of that we are proud of our these people the higher management and administration and at least they are on it anyways so give them back Palestine, this uh, Spain, Hispania, why not? They deserve to be there. And then ask these uh, Jews, when Moses liberated you, when you denied him, when Moses said to you in the desert, in peninsula, Sinai, that when you cross Red Sea, that let's go and fight Palestinians. Who were those Palestinians? Arabs? Who were those? Germans? Anglo-Saxons? Those were Arabs, the children of Ismail. And they were living there before you. But you came under the pretext that God promised you, you are liars. God didn't promise you for Canaan. God promised Ismael in book of Genesis. 
<coughs> chapter 17, which I'm going to come now. So, who were they? Who was Goliath? From where Goliath was? German? Hmm. So, they were living there and these people came from Musa alayhi salam because they were those people were kuffar, disbelievers. And Musa alayhi salam liberated them, brought them and they said to Musa, Musa, you go with your God. We are sitting here. Pharaoh was better. Pharaoh was better than you. At least he used to give us food and you brought it here for famine, for, for, for hunger. That's what you are giving us here. Ingratitude people. Moses said, you stiff neck people. You are stiff neck. Ingratitude. <clears throat> These are terminologies given by their own prophets. They kill prophets. What are you and me? What are our babies and kids and children? You people don't understand the concept of Jew. Anyone who is non, who, who, who is a Goyim and Gentile, they are, they have the concept and their doctrine that they are, should be exploited. They are made for exploitation. That's their hawk. That's their right. And whenever you start touching it, uh, they brought this anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic. You see, this is sickness. This is the games you play. You kill everyone you want. And when somebody tries to attack on you, you call him is anti-Semitic. We are not anti-Semitic. We, anti we know your fitra. We know your nature. We know Allah told us in the Quran. You didn't even spare prophets. What you going to do with us, we know. Anyways, uh, let me come to the topic now. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 17 and see that Palestine and Canaan was promised to who? The children of Isaac or children of Ishmael? Listen now. Genesis chapter 17 verse number 1. And when Abraham was 99 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. God is saying to Abraham. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be the father of many nations. Plural. Not only Jews. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. But by thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, who children, and I will make nations of thee, and the kings shall come out. Of course, the kings will not come out for Abraham, his children coming, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. Who is this thy seed? Ishmael. Thy is a singular, not seeds. Thy seed and to thy seed after thee, meaning the children of even that who is Ismail alayhi salam. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee, listen, the land where thou art a stranger, Palestine, you'd never know this, even the Arabia, you never know this, and the land where thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan. <laughs> Didn't you read these? Hold the Canaan, city, country, whatever, Palestine, to who? Thy seed. Who is thy seed? Ismail. Because Isaac was not even born. Because if you read further, God says, and I'm going to give you a glad tiding of another son, Isaac. Read Genesis 17 and 18. And I will be their God. Allah will be his God. Who? The children of Ishmael and Canaan is the place Palestine. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou then thy seed, again smile, after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Was his heart there? Was Isaac born that time? I'm asking Jews. I challenge Jews and Christians and the supporter of these Jews, these uh, Zionist Christians, these wasps, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, tell me, when God was giving this all revelation to Abraham, was Isaac born or not? And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you, meaning between is Old English. Going further. <clears throat> and God, verse 15, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah or Sarah. Because she is going to give 
look here and i will bless her see isaac was not born and i will bless her and give thee a son also 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 and of her yeah i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of people shall be her not ask i'm asking these jews do you read your bible canaan was gifted to who promised to who where you people came in as a promised land this land was promised to thy son ishmael not isaac because isaac is going to born he was not born yet <clears throat> then listen verse 18 and abraham said unto god or that is or that ishmael listen and abraham said unto god oh that ishmael might live before thee see before thee and god said sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son is another ishmael is back now listen this and thou shalt call his name isaac and i will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant so god is going to make a covenant between isaac and ishmael both but Palestine was promised to only Ishmael, according to the Bible. And for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Listen, for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Why God is saying I have heard? Because Shama in Hebrew means hear, witnesses. And Ishmael, Allah heard. Listen. For as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes ye shall beget, and I will make him a great nation. I will make him a great nation. And but for my covenant will I establish with Isaac, with Sarah, and on and on and on. You read with just Genesis 18, you will find Isaac and Isaac and Ishmael in 17. Now, after having said all these things, Canaan promised to who? I challenge all the Jews and Christians to prove me from your Bible that Canaan was gifted to Isaac, not to Ishmael. Show me in your Bible. Show me. Don't talk. Show me the way I showed you. Do you, you see, this is the deception they play. This is the deception they're playing for thousands of years. And when you read Genesis 18 and further, you start seeing Ishmael is going to get bad. He's a, he's a wild. His children are wild. Why? Then they change these pe things, you know, political reason. Now I'm asking, when God says that Ishmael, you are blessed and 12 princes you shall beget, then why God after one chapter says that Ishmael, you are not blessed and your children are ruthless? Why? You see, these are the games you are playing for thousands of years, changing the kalam of Allah. Anyways, I'm going to end this. Canaan, this is the promised land. You keep talking. Shut that, you know, false agenda and pretext. Your Bible says in Genesis 17, 17 that God promised Canaan, which was given to thy seed, Ishmael, because Isaac was not born yet.